Good morning. This morning's verse is from the book of John. It's John 5, 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Now, I want to back up just a moment here. I want to look at what's going on. This is um, the Pharisees have sent people who are looking for a way to find to kill Jesus. And I find it interesting. They've accused Jesus of, um, of working on the Sabbath because he healed the lame man. Now, what's funny about this is the Pharisees like to keep the law. Uh, they like to make sure that everybody abided by the rules. So here they are telling somebody that he broke. First of all, they tell the man who got up from the mat that he's not allowed to work on that particular day because he's not allowed to carry his mat. So carry one step further to that. Carry to the point where he then, they then tell Jesus that he can't be healing people on the Sabbath. To which Jesus has a good response. But nonetheless, the Pharisees are actually doing their job in keeping the law when they're telling Jesus that he is breaking the law. Now, I find the irony in that pretty, pretty interesting. So when we, when we talk about the speck in somebody else's eye, we need to remember that there's probably a log in our own that we're trying to see around as we make accusations. But nonetheless, Jesus goes on through the explanation. He explains that his father works day and night, endlessly for eternity. So he works too. And I find this great because if we consider ourselves the body of Christ, the church is the body of Christ, then where he is working, we are to be working. He created the Sabbath. God created the Sabbath as a day of rest for man, not for God. And that is very important to remember that he knows, he expects us to be running hard for six days. But on the seventh day, sit and have your cup refilled. Be replenished. Be filled back up so you have the energy to run another six days. But nonetheless, let's go back to, um, to verse 19. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing on his own accord, but only what, the Father see, only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. For whatever the Father, lo for the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but passes from death to life. You know, this is a great verse to be discussing today. The day where, where be men starts up again. And we hope to have so many men show up to this tonight that we can do something. When we look at this verse, we see the relationships between son and father, between us as fathers with our sons, between us as sons with our father. And we look back and we realize that as we as fathers walk, we teach our sons to walk, not so much by what we say, but what we do. But even more importantly than that, do we do the things that we say? You know, there's so many songs that are coming to mind this morning, and one of them is, is um, Less Like Me. You know, when we try to be more like Jesus and try to set an example and we fail miserably, but do we keep trying or do we forge our own path? But digging further into this, deep, into this verse, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word, that means we have to be two things. One, we have to be listening, and two, we have to be talking. And that talking is not just with our words, it's with our actions. The church and people in it are called hypocrites so many times because their actions differ from their words. And it's easy to look at those and say, oh, they're a hypocrite. Recognize that sometimes the actions differing is a result of brokenness of the person, not an intent to mislead. But many times we cover our own weaknesses with words, hoping that nobody will see what we're hiding underneath the, ma underneath the mask. So we need to be listening to God. We need to be talking to others and we need to be walking as best we possibly can the talk that we are talking. And I love this part. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, 
That means we have a mission. We have been told, go and be disciples. Go and make disciples. So guys, when I talk about being men, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about being men of God, being men as best we can, like God in man form, following the example set by Jesus, opening our mouths and telling our story and being vulnerable and sharing the moments where we were broken and fallen and screwed up miserably with other guys. Why? So they can hear it. So we can be the ones that are sent by God as an example in Jesus to go and make disciples, not by telling God's story again and again in the same words that anybody can go read, but by telling them in our own story, our own story of brokenness. We go around carrying burdens and carrying stories and weights and and guilt and shame and not forgiving ourselves. We need to recognize that Jesus was sent to forgive our sins. Down here in the bottom of this, he who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but pass from death to life. Jesus did that. Nothing we did. And you know, I used to look, I'd watch, as a kid, I'd watch um, uh, TV shows or movies, and there was a moment, a scene of confession in there, and and they would be told, go do, you know, three Hail Marys and, and whatever. I, I don't know the verbiage. Um, and I used to see that as a payment for sin, but I missed it. It's not a payment for sin. It's, it's a response to forgiveness. You're not doing wrong and paying a fine for doing wrong. You're giving worship in whatever way deemed necessary for the forgiveness that you've already been given. Make no mistake, if we, no matter what life we live, if we know Jesus, we have an eternity. Now, what that eternity in heaven looks like is determined by what we do with the opportunities that are faced in front of us. Do we go tell our story? Or do we hide under a rock, hoping that nobody will see and nobody will question? So brothers and sisters, as you walk through today, I challenge you, climb out from underneath that rock. Stand tall, not in your shame and your guilt, but in the forgiveness that you've been given despite your shame and your guilt and the things that you've done. We get to live free because we know Jesus and we do not have judgment in front of us. When the end comes, people, will, people who've passed will awaken and they will awaken to one of two things. Either they will awaken to an eternal freedom and the well done, my faithful servant, or we will awaken to judgment. And what does our eternal hell look like? Brothers and sisters, I don't want to be there. I don't want to go to that place. So please take a moment, focus on this verse, focus on what you do with today and how you make a difference today in somebody else's life because Jesus made that difference and paved that path for you. I find it funny when I look at the songs today that the stairway to heaven may be, not, may be tiny, but the highway to hell is huge. Look for the stairs. Take the steps to start climbing those stairs. Know God, know Jesus. Enter, have the Holy Spirit enter your heart. Walk the way he designed us to walk and carry the burden in a thankful way, in a grateful way, because of the forgiveness that we've been given. Again, John 5, 24, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but pass from death to life. Father God, thank you so much for, for providing, for being for providing that path and coming as Jesus to create that path. And Father God, after you ascended to heaven, when Jesus, you sat at the right hand of the Father, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit back to walk with us, to lead us, to give us the courage to stand up when we know we are broken. Father God, I ask that today you open hearts I ask that as we meet as brothers and sisters in Christ, that Lord, you open our hearts, open our mouth, allow us to be collected in community, talking about your word and giving worship and glory to you. Father God, thank you for your mercy, your grace, 
your everlasting love, and thank you so much for providing us a way to be able to spend our eternity in heaven with you. In your son Jesus' holy name, amen. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I'm laying it down. Laying it down, all I know is I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. I pray that you have a fantastic day today. Go forth and be men. And men, I hope I see you tonight at the Lakeside Campus of Family Church, Building 5, 630. Let's walk together in God's Word, in Jesus' example, and figure out how we are to act like men. Let's go be men. No matter how far we are from God, no matter how far we've fallen, no matter how far we've gotten down a path we feel we have no way back from, turn around, guys, because God is right behind you. Have a blessed day. We'll see you soon.